said, when I first started this, um, I was, it's not like I was the writer that I am right now. I had to grow. And part of that growth was getting feedback and being humble enough to take it from fans. Welcome to The Unique Show, where we talk about all things Unique Studios, African geekdom, and the business of creators. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to The Unique Show. My name is Roy Okupe, lead writer and CEO of Unique Studios. Co-host, introduce yourself. Jay Agbaje from the Niger Nerds and super fan of all things Unique Studios. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. I mean, I don't have a tattoo or anything, but definitely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we're still reeling from the Iyanu news. Um, you know, it's it's been cool to, to see all, all the, the reaction. All the, all the talk online. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So what are, what are we doing today? I'm actually really excited about about yeah today. today we're gonna to be breaking down the actual business of creating this project, but mostly in a way that can uh, help other people learn how to do it themselves. Yep, testing some steps and tips and also telling them um, ways that they can accomplish the same thing with their own IPs. So yep, yep, yep. as as you guys know, I always try to um be as helpful as possible. Um, I know that um, a lot of people DM me and I try to get back to them as quickly and as fast as possible. I mean, may not be able to do it all the time, but for me, this is one of the most exciting parts of what I do is being able to share my own experience. So today I really want to talk about how to um, how to basically break into the, the animation business, um, whether that's with your IP or maybe with someone else's IP, partnering with someone else. Um, so yeah, it should be fun. Should so be I think we start with that. Let's start yeah. with that. Yeah. The first things first is actually having an IP. <laughs> yes, that's the number one. So number one, <laughs> you can have a story. Have something. You have to have something. <laughs> um, that's number one. It's to have a killer IP. Um, now whether that's you, an artist, or you're a writer, or you just want to be a producer and you want to um, partner with somebody that already has the IP, I think that's really what you have to start with first. Like you have to make sure that whatever it is that you're, um, whatever story that you're telling, it has to be as good as possible. Mm -hmm. It has to be as unique, no pun intended, as possible. And it has to be, um, you have to answer the question, why does this have to be, why should this be on TV um, right now? For me personally, one of the things that helped me was when I first started, obviously there weren't a lot of, you know, African related superhero and fantasy stories out there. Um, that was really um, one of my selling points. Uh, but for me, it always really came back to character and story because you can have all these nice cultural elements around your characters and, and your world and your story. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the car if people cannot relate to the character, if people cannot identify with them in some shape or form, and again, they can have people can have superpowers and you can still identify with them um yeah really i don't know why you're laughing you know that's that's you know just because a person flies or a person can punch through walls or a person shoots energy beams and bolts and all that stuff doesn't why are you only mentioning energy. superman like right like all that is just hey, on superman hey, hey, like energy uh, beams is not fire hands, <laughs> oh yeah i thought you meant <laughs> I like bolts and all that but the fantasy elements don't yeah. take away from the fact that there can be very real relatable struggles and yes. real relatable conflicts and issues. So I yeah. agree with you 100%. And I think that's what, for me, that's what makes a great project. If I look yeah. at a project or a great IP, it's about whether I like the people involved. I like what's happening. What are they dealing with? Can I yeah. connect with that? Does it exactly. make sense to me? And as much as there's a lot of fantasy elements and I want my mind blown and I want to escape the situation I want in life, I still want to look at certain things that feel like it grounds it in something for me. Right. Yeah, no, you you have it um hundred percent, and I think one of the things that's why I always try to tell people don't get distracted if you are doing something that's um culturally specific by the culture, right? Oh, that yeah. should be personally for me the icing on the cake. That oh, okay, we're telling the story about Yoruba culture, or Nigerian culture, or West African culture. Mm -hmm. Like that should be the icing on the cake. I always try to tell global stories for everybody. Um, that just so happen to have you know characters that are from you know Africa, so. The first thing is that you have to have a killer IP and 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 relatable and and um you know 
really really fantastic characters that people can see themselves with that's that's the, that's the first place that you need to to start um i would say for me um the second thing is that um you want to put it out there i know now i know that you know look if you can copyright and trademark and do all these things before please go ahead and do it i did that um before i really started to aggressively put my work out there mm -hmm. um i also have to say please i'm not a lawyer so I have to put that disclaimer out there. Um, so please, if you're trying to do all that, advice. Yes, it is not in any way. But um, I say that to say that a lot of times people get scared to put their work out there, um, either because of someone's going to steal it or are people going to like it? Are people going to shame me or and all that? You can't be worried about all that kind of stuff. You have to put your thing out there because guess what's going to happen? You're going to get feedback. Right. And the earlier you get feedback, the better for you. Um, you know, because for me, that's for me early on, like that was a risk I was willing to take. Like when I first created AXO, I had the first, once I had the first 20 pages, I put it out there for free. Mm -hmm. Like I literally put it out there for free and nobody knew me in the comic book industry. I hadn't done anything. I hadn't written anything. I haven't really written a poem at that point in time that I could say, oh, this is my work. <laughs> I'm serious. So for me, I had to use that as an opportunity to give people the most least barrier to entry as possible. Here it is. It's free just sign up for my email and you get it for free and that's how i built my initial fan base and that's another thing that you, you did that really stands you out the fact that you put out a good in a, a freemium model you put some of it out there so people could look at it so you could get feedback and improve as you went along really really amazing and it worked yes it did you began to get the fan base again because the ip was good right you know so the ip i you know again not to toot my own horn like i like i said with my stories as much as the these characters are in a larger than life situations, whether it's EXO, Iano, Malaika, I always try to make them as relatable as possible. And by the way, you can get all these books on uniquestudios.com. Yes, um, so can. please check everything out. But yeah, it's 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 important to really put the work out there, get the feedback, and start to build your fan base because I feel like that's you're going to be getting feedback. You're going to start to hear things from people that you may not have thought about. Um, and it allows you to reiterate great you know, point. Great before point. you put anything out there, you know, officially. So, like I said, put it out there, get the feedback, start to be talking about it. feedback. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's actually make that practical. Yes. Tell us about a time when you got some actual feedback that you took on board and even went into influencing how your stories or the one of your stories that you told. Yeah. So one of the, um, one of the things that, that happened early on with, um, with EXO was that um, when I first put it out there, right? You know, and again, I was proud of the design. I was proud of everything. But one of the things that came back, what people told me was that the suit doesn't really feel African. It doesn't feel like Nigerian or whatever. And that wasn't easy to hear at that point in time. But I, 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 I took it, um, and I, in the so in volume one. Um, volume two, that's when I started getting a lot of that feedback. And in volume three, I actually wrote it into the story that his suit started to evolve. Hmm. Um, and if you look at the, the story of EXO, like it, 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 it's it's sci-fi, but there's a lot of fantastical elements and fantasy elements to it. Basically, right. his suit and his powers come from the divine ones who are essentially like the gods of the unique universe. Hmm. So basically, the way, the way I, I, I wrote it into the story was that because the suit itself was sentient, it started to shape and form and you know go back into what what the past felt what it felt like to be the, in the past like within mm -hmm. the divine ones like how they use their own power so certain things like the zentangles in the glowing lights like the triangle like that comes straight from like adire which is like a yoruba um yoruba cloth or whatever yeah. and then also, right. also like you you see if you notice like when you start reading um the second volume like he has beads on yeah. his his arm and and, and his neck in, integrated into um the suit as well so for me i felt like it made the character better it made it more uh less generic um and and more something that um i already felt like the suit was unique but again it really brought it out and i mean if you can if you can squeeze let me see let me just take this hopefully i don't break my wall so this, <laughs> this is what i was talking about so you can see you can see what i'm saying like with the beads um, yeah. And then those little triangle things, and then the, the the beads on his neck, and all that. All these things weren't in the original design, mm -hmm. but feedback. I, I applied it, and people were 
like so excited when when oh, so he came improved, out with that news. the fan base. He improved it, yeah, exactly, and he grew the fan base, and and it also made me a better writer as well because I started to look more into. And like I said, when I first started this, um, I was. It's not like I was the writer that I am right now. I had to grow, and part of that growth was getting feedback and being humble enough to take it from fans. Now, sure. I would say ignore trolls. Like some people are out there to just say you not like you be yeah, yeah okay so no, go ahead go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so what about when the feedback is just stupid <laughs> like, i mean it's bad <laughs> yeah you, you just ignore it because that's that's going to happen and that's actually how you know that you are getting somewhere is when you start to have people that send all these ridiculous comments to you because you're doing something right and mm. it's affecting them in a way because most of the time people are either jealous or they want to be where you are and you know they can't take the necessary steps to get there and they want to take it out on you um mm -hmm. you know so but there's also i don't want to confuse harsh criticism with trolls like there's some criticism that is harsh and honest yeah that is not necessarily somebody that is trolling you so don't just immediately call oh, you're a hater because you don't like what i'm doing there might be a nugget in there for you to to improve I think it's fair to say that you can take the feedback, but when some feedback comes, it's hard. You know, get get second opinions on what you're hearing, right? Yeah. Bounce it off other people you trust. Um, exactly. Get their feedback on the feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Although, like, you end up hurting your own soul as a, as a creator. You don't want that. Yeah. Um, but then, moving along, in terms yeah. of the process of creating, next steps. So yes. you got your IP. Yeah. Getting feedback. It's beginning yeah. to have that fan base that's beginning yeah. to grow. Yeah. What are you supposed to be thinking? How, how do you take that next leap? So there are two things you can do. And I'll tell you the path that I, I took and I'll tell you the path I would have loved to take, <laughs> which I didn't get to take. <laughs> okay. the, the next thing I did personally was I created a short film based on one of my own uh, graphic novels, Malaika Warrior Queen. Um, mm. And um, obviously the Malaika fan base was started to really become very large and people really love this character and i you i saw that as an opportunity to go on kickstarter like i said i know the next thing people are going to say is i don't have money for a short film neither did i i went on kickstarter with the fan base that i already built for over five years with mm -hmm. i had four of uh, my like graphic novels i believe excuse me three out by then and then i just went on kickstarter and i said hey guys i want to do a short film based on this and we were able to raise $20,000. And I put all that into um, the animation. Shout out to, to Nia uh, Akima Lyon and Antio who helped me um, Auntie Hill, that, baby. That, yeah. that, that, that short animation that was really fantastic. And once I had that, I became a filmmaker. Right, there's, there's, there's no, I'm serious. They because like that. That, That's true. nobody can That's take that away from me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, because you've made a film and it's on YouTube and it's proof. And you know the Malika animation actually won awards. Um, you know, uh, it, it won it won an award in LA and even back home in 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 um, Nigeria. It was it, the best animated short in Afrif, uh, which is one of the biggest um, you know award show in, you know back in Lagos, Nigeria, uh, West yeah. Africa. To be honest with you, yeah. um, and that really gave me a lot of recognition in the animation industry as this guy knows what he's doing. Um, so once I had that, I it started to open doors for me. To be able to talk with producers um i literally had again i don't know can i say this i had someone from netflix actually get, you know dm me you know um because of that malaika animation mm -hmm. now it didn't end up being something that ended up becoming a reality for whatever reason that i can't go into right now but that was just validation for me at that point in time that i've created something that has gotten the attention of the biggest streamers like i said in a previous podcast you don't know who is out there looking at your youtube your instagram right. as long as you continue to create quality content people are going to take notice so that's the route i took the other route that you can take is you take your graphic novel and you get a manager or an agent and you have them start to shop it i feel like that's a little bit harder because at that point in time even if you get a if you get a deal right people might not really look at you as somebody that can be, you know, working like with the, if you get an animated, uh, let's say somebody calls you and say they want to do animation of your book. If you don't have a portfolio, you might not be as involved. Like I was able to, with Iyanu, be an executive producer because I had a body of work to show mm. that I already created a short film. It already has 700,000 views on YouTube. These things actually give you leverage to be able to be more involved with whatever you're producing with 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 a partner I, i'll go into more details but i want to give you a chance to 
if there's any questions at that point in time, no. uh, at this point in time. At this point, I'll just say this. Yeah. My one question would be, when, how, how, like, how, how do you even find the right people to help you shop your projects? Because there's a lot of people that always reach yeah. out saying they know this, they know that, they can reach, they, they know everybody point. in the world. They have yeah. all the contacts. They want to get you to sign something. Uh, and next to you, they want to get you to sign a shopping agreement and all this yeah. kind of stuff. So what's your <laughs> advice for creators who get those kinds of contact? Like, do you, like, how do they investigate the people who are reaching out to them? Yeah, that's actually a very good point because I've been I've 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 been a um I've signed some very silly deals. I've yeah. signed deals that didn't allow me to um shop my own characters for two years and, and that person that I signed the deal with basically just parked the the he didn't do any he didn't do anything with it. And I basically couldn't do anything with my character. So th that that's actually a very important point. I would say it's easier um it's easier when somebody comes to you and they want to manage you, right? Rather than you looking for a manager, because in my own experience, like my represent, uh, the representations that I had were people that came to me and said, hey, we've seen your work, we want to manage you. The first thing that I would say is to ask them, who are your clients? Right. Who do you actually represent? And if they don't want to give you any names, run away. <laughs> like literally run away. If they give you names, call those people and ask them, are these are people? Actually, yeah. And don't call one person. Call multiple people. Put put their name in Google. Do as many do as much research as you can. Get as much information. Like I said, if you cannot call somebody on the phone to actually ask them, who is this person, and are they doing a good job for you? I would. My advice would be just don't do it because you again like you can get in trouble with the wrong representation and sign and sign the wrong deals. If somebody sends yeah. you a shopping agreement get a lawyer get a good lawyer that is an entertainment lawyer not just a random lawyer or whatever the case may be an entertainment lawyer that knows what they're doing it may be expensive but i promise you it will save you a lot of heartache in the long run yeah and again i have to say this i'm not a i'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice so please just wanted to put that disclaimer out there that's advice that comes from some pain <laughs> 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 comes from some bree bruises in the past that's yes. the there a lot okay, of bruises. so another thing is i mean because you've talked a lot in the past about putting your work out there and you yourself have taken every opportunity i know you to be somebody who's really skilled at um presenting yourself properly and everything yeah what are what do you say to people who think that you know um had, once you have the representation you let them do all the work like i mean I've also noticed you 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 do your best to attend um, conferences, go to yeah. events, and basically yeah. connecting with the fans any way you can. So, how does that play into your strategy as you advise people? Whether or not yeah, somebody is representing you, you always have to act like you're not being represented by anybody. That's mm -hmm. just my own. Um, that's that's like I said, my own motto, right? Even if I have I have agents and, and managers and, and mm -hmm. a lawyer right now, but my hustle is like I have nobody helping True. me out and and i think the people that are representing you also appreciate that hunger and that fire and they have a lot more to work with um and the reason i say that is because this um deal that happened with the yanu it wouldn't have happened if i didn't go for a conference in 2019 uh called content london mm -hmm. that's where i met the um the first executive producer um that um you know first saw what the potential that Yanu could be as an animated series and said, I want to make this into an animation. I'm going to do everything and use all my resources. But if I didn't go to that program, as a matter of fact, I actually almost canceled my flight because I was feeling lazy. I was like, I don't want to go to London in December. It's almost Christmas. I just want to be home. I want to retire. I want to start holidays or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But my wife, was, my wife was like, you know what? Again, listen to your wise people. Um, she was like, look, just go out just 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 you never know what's going to happen and what happened was i ended up meeting somebody that would eventually get me um into like i said um, hbo max um mm -hmm. for an animated series so the moral of the story is that one of the things that i always encourage people to do is go to as many conventions as possible go to as many conferences for animation like there's things like mipcom um mip junior khan um you know all these different you know programs that are centered around annecy as well too is a good one mm -hmm. centered around like animation um they are really really good even if you don't come back with a deal 
you come back with a lot of connections. I've met people from Netflix. I've met people from Warner Brothers. I've met people from Network. Cartoon Network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've met, they've give, actually given me their business cards at these events and said, email me your stuff and I'll check it out. And I've literally emailed them and they've responded to me and, and check things out. So you'll be surprised that all these people that you're trying to reach, you know, when someone sends you an email and says, oh, you know, I love your book. Why don't you just reach out to Netflix and and... And, and and start an animation with them i'm always like you think i don't want to be on netflix <laughs> <laughs> but like the reality is that you can't reach out to them if you go out to these conferences where people are actually they go to these places to hear pitches yeah. and, to, and to find new creators so that would be like for me the last thing is that go out there to all these different places travel the world meet people and last thing i'll say is that be patient it doesn't happen overnight Ain't that the truth? Because you've been working on this for years. Yeah, decades. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. The truth of the matter is there are a lot of steps that you need to take. Get your IP. Put that IP out there. Get the feedback. Get some feedback on the feedback. Yep. Make connections with your fans. Network as many places as you can. And like the best of the best out there, whether it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson or it's Roy Coupe. Make sure you're also self-marketing and promoting yourself every way you can. <laughs> so that way people can see your work and exactly. see that what you're doing is something they want to get into. Great yep. advice, man. Great advice. Yep. Um, and like I said, you know, this is um, one of my most, um, I, I love doing this. So I feel like um, being transparent with people is, is really the way to go in this industry because I feel like a rising tide raises all boats. So if you have any, ever have any questions, please put it in the comments of things that you want us to talk about next on the business of creators. Um, but yeah, for now, please uh, continue to put yourself out there, continue to believe and continue to be patient. Um, if it happened for me, I strongly 100% believe it can happen for you. I had no experience when I started doing what I was doing. Um, in 2008 and i've learned and i've tried my best to put my best foot forward and that's what has led me to this position and you can do it too so i guess without further ado we will see you when we see you take care guys and good luck in all your endeavors later Peace everybody out.